So now it's time to get your rocket tuned and ready for flight. But before we do that, I just want to cover a few things here. If you ever simulated a model rocket with fins in a program like Open Rocket or RockSim or one of those, you might have come up with something called a stability caliber or a stability margin. And this is a measurement of how well your finned rocket is going to fly during flight, if it's going to be stable or if it's not really safe to launch. And what we're going to do here with this tuning process is sort of the equivalent for thrust vector vehicles. What we want to do is find out how sensitive the thrust vector control system should be so that we can effectively keep the rocket upright. When you tune your rocket, it's going to give you three values, a p-value, an i-value, and a d-value for something called a PID controller. We can get into that later, but as long as your rocket has the same mass and the same motor, those values don't need to be changed. So if you want to fly your rocket multiple times with basically the same build each time, you don't need to do this tuning process for every single flight. However, if you change the motor or your rocket gets significantly heavier or lighter or longer or shorter, you're going to want to do this tuning process again. So with all that said, let's get into the tuning process and see how it works. To start, you can follow along with the rocket tuning instructions online. There's a link to them in the description down below. Before you begin tuning, make sure your rocket is ready for flight. The motor should be inserted and the parachutes should be packed. Every physical thing about the rocket should be roughly the same between now and launch. Then, boot the flight computer up and open up the Signal app. Connect with the flight computer and then head into the Tuning section. If you need help at any point, you can tap the question mark in the top right. This page gives step-by-step -step instructions of how to tune the rocket if you forget. You can also tap the full instructions button, which will send you to the BPS website for more details. Tap the back button to head back to the tuning page. Then tap it again to get back to the home page and then enter system preferences. The idle beeps can get kind of annoying, so usually I'll disable them. That said, if this is your first time tuning, it may take several minutes so you can just turn the flight computer off. We'll be making a few measurements here, so grab a notebook and a pen. For this video, I'll be writing down all of the measurements in this notebook first, then putting them in the app at the end. The first measurement is loaded mass. This is how heavy your rocket will be when it lifts off the pad. We'll be measuring this mass in grams on the scale, but the app expects it in kilograms, so we'll convert the 949 grams to 0.949 kilograms. Next, let's find the rocket's center of mass, sometimes called the center of gravity. I'll try to balance the rocket on one hand, and wherever I'm able to do that is the center of mass. In this case, it's conveniently right by these two screws. We'll mark the center of mass with a tiny piece of tape. Then, we'll measure the distance between the center of mass and the screws of the thrust vectoring mount. In this case, it looks like it's about 35 and a half centimeters. The Signal app expects this measurement in meters, so we'll put 0.355 meters. We need to create two different points on the rocket that it can hang from, both equidistant from the center of mass. I've chosen to put my points 0.35 meters, or 35 centimeters, away from the center of mass. These don't have to be 35 centimeters for every rocket, but it's best to keep them larger than 15 centimeters. Once these measurements are marked, we'll get a little bit more specific by marking their exact spot with a sharpie. Then I'll write down the distance I chose in the string to COM section. Once again, this should be in meters, so instead of 35 centimeters, I'll write 0.35 meters. As a quick side note, these two numbers are really close, but that is just a coincidence. Now we need to hang the rocket so we can swing it around the center of mass. We'll use two strings for this, and I've already tied holes in both. Each string is going to be secured around those hang points that we made. One string around the bottom point, and one string around the top point. Now I'll lift the rocket off the table and put it on the floor. I'm going to be hanging the rocket from the table's surface. You can hang it from a ceiling or any flat surface above the vehicle, though. Here you can see I've marked points that are already 35 centimeters from one center point. This is the same as the string to COM distance that we marked earlier. If you're tuning a rocket yourself right now, it can be helpful to mark these distances on wherever you're hanging it from. To hang the rocket, we'll be clamping the strings down to the table using these clamps here. I'll push the string against the table at the hang points that we marked, and then slowly pull the rocket up off the ground, just a few inches. Then I'll clamp the string to the table to secure it in place. Now we'll do the exact same thing for the other side of the rocket. Make sure the rocket is about parallel with the floor, and then clamp it in place. Now we're going to measure the distance of these strings, from the top of the rocket body to the point where it's clamped. If they're a little bit different, by a centimeter or so, that's okay. We'll write this length down, in meters, as the string length. 
I measured about 62 centimeters, so I'll write 0.62 meters. Now we need a stopwatch. I'll be using my phone for this. We'll be measuring how long it takes for the rocket to swing back and forth a few times. So we have the rocket hanging from the strings here. We've got the timer ready to go, and we're going to rotate the rocket about its center of mass. This is the point that we marked earlier. I'm going to put my finger on it and then give it a little push just to start the rotation. Now what we want to do is make sure that the center of mass doesn't move at all. Um, it can rotate about the center of mass, but we don't want it to be sliding side by side or uh, moving back and forth. So this looks like a good rotation to me. And we're going to start our timer uh, for 10 oscillations. That's what we're going to be timing. Uh, we're going to start our timer at the peak of the oscillation, when, the, when this half of the rocket moves uh, further away from the camera. You can choose any peak, but that's just uh, what I've chosen so that we can start and stop it at the right time for 10 full oscillations. So here we go, and start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So that's ten full oscillations, which took 13.72 seconds. And what we want is the average time for each individual oscillation. And all we have to do to get that time is move the decimal point one way to the left. So that's 1.372 seconds for each average oscillation. And with that, we have just one more step to go. Once again, 10 oscillations took 13.72 seconds, which means the average time is 1.372 seconds. And that's what we'll write down. The last step is to write down the average thrust of the motor you're using in newtons. I'm using a G11 from Aerotech, which has an average thrust of 11 newtons. With the swing testing complete, we can remove the strings and tape from the vehicle. Then we'll boot up the flight computer again. We'll also get out the notebook as well as the Signal R2 app. Tap on Signal R2 again, and then go into System Preferences first and turn off that buzzer. Now back out of that and go into the tuning section. Now we're going to take all of the data that we wrote down in the notebook and transfer it to the tuning app. Make sure your units and decimal places are all correct for this. Just before you hit the tune button, I usually take a screenshot just in case I want to reference these numbers later. Then, when you're ready, hit the tune button. At the top of the page, you'll find the vehicle's inertia, but right below that, you'll find the P, I, and D values that I mentioned earlier. Right now, these are the suggested sensitivities based on the information you entered. To configure these into your flight computer, hit Send to Signal. Very nice! Looks like it worked! Before we leave this page, I'm going to take another screenshot just for reference. Then, we're going to back out of the tuning results page, back out of that page, go into the thrust vectoring page, and then double check that these PID values are the same ones that we just configured. They all look good to me, so we're ready to go. In the next video, we'll do one more TVC check before we head out to the launch pad.